You can't help everybody. Exactly. That's simply it. You can't you can't help everybody, but there are people out there that we got some amazing clients, we got some amazing students, we got some amazing people in our lives too. So we know that the impact is being felt and we know the impact is being seen. Yes, I want to give them feedback. Yes, I want to help them, mm -hmm. but I cannot. There's no way I could survive as a therapist or a person and be a wife, a mother, everything else, and I give my energy to every single client that I see. This is how we operate in today. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the More Than a Side Hustle podcast, where we help nine to fathers create more impact, income, and influence outside their jobs. I am one of your hosts, Anthony Hartzog, joined here by my beautiful wife. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I want to say nice to see you, but we can't see you. You can see us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you got any reviews? Do not have any reviews, so all any shade to reviews. you. Any new reviews for all shade to you guys that are not writing us a review i see people people comment say i'm binging your podcast please please go ahead and write us a review uh we'll read it on here and it just continues to help us to grow whenever we start to get more brand deals and things like that we can show them that our audience is tapped in and tuned in with us week after week so it's very important <laughs> Every time, listen, we got over 4,000 downloads last month, so we want to shout out to you guys, man. Mm -hmm. We are getting closer. Thank you for listening. We're getting closer and closer to 100 uh, episodes, which is a, an amazing milestone. We're not there yet. We got like 20 more or something like that. Okay. But- About four or five more months. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, we, 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 we have been consi consistent with this. That means we've been consistent for over two years at that point. So uh -huh. we want to keep growing, want to keep showing, and- uh Speaking of brand deals, you had you had a topic that I, I definitely wanted to bring up. We, I, I wonder if I spoke about this one before, but I don't I don't think I did. We had a similar but topic. A similar topic, but that was with a whole different thing. Okay. So I'm sorry now. Anything else you want to talk about before? Go ahead. Okay. About, we're going to talk about that for a little bit. We're going to also catch y'all up on what's happening, but we was having we had a few conversations. Uh, we, we just got back from Vegas, so we're going to talk about that experience. Let's talk about that first. So we went out to Vegas to uh, see Usher. Yeah, that man. was great. Um, I don't know the last time I've been in Vegas, but it was a good time. Usher was great. Go see the show if you haven't. That's all I can say about that. I don't know. So <laughs> I've been to Vegas, and I want to I want to tell you guys a story. We I've been to Vegas five, maybe five, six times, and about half of those experiences was with my job, mm -hmm. and the prior experiences were with me straight out of college. So Whole when different. you it is so <laughs> I'm, I'm out of college, right, and I and I go to Vegas. And then I go Probably to Vegas broke. on my company's dime, <laughs> and then I go to Vegas, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So I want to tell you guys the completely different experiences and why you need to have more than one experience at a location, <laughs> especially a place like Vegas. So out of college, we were staying at the Riviera Inn. And if you guys... Anything with the inn at the end is a motel. It was like Riviera. It was one of, okay. literally one of the first <laughs> hotels in Vegas. They don't even, it doesn't even exist anymore. They took it down because oh, I was really? trying to Google it. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to Google it. And we went out there and we were like two, three to a room. And we were... It was like literally so bad they had prostitutes in front of the hotel. Hopefully YouTube doesn't take this video down because I use that word. Maybe we bleep it out. Editor, bleep that word out just in case. Oh, really? YouTube does that? Yeah, YouTube be bugging. This is why people take this stuff over YouTube. We're going to get into that, too. <laughs> we, we, are we? I got so many things. I got so many things. So <laughs> there was like, there was, that's how, that was the first experience in, in Vegas. And this was 2008, 2009. And then for the next three, four years, like 2012 to like 15, I went with my job. Company dime. We stayed at the Venetian. We stayed at a few, a few hotels. And it was it was mom blowing. We you know we had the stretch limo. We had the the, the sweets where you went out with your job twice out there because one time I went and one time I didn't. Yeah, it was no. We went. Th I think we went three times. Oh, I don't know. Maybe two or three times. Anyway, they used to like going out there. Yeah, we went out there a few <laughs> times, and we had like this. Uh, we had like the hotel suite at the very top to host our company meetings, and then this time we went to Vegas. We stayed at the Venetian and, you know. Venetian. My first time we had went to the Cosmo. We stayed, we stayed at the, at the Cosmopolitan. Cosmo. That was 10 years ago. Venetian <laughs> was off the chain. Um, huge. <laughs> everything. Yeah, the suites are huge there. Are huge it was a huge hotel, number one. Suites are amazing. But the the gem is that the difference between those experience and this one was we I was not thinking about money the entire time we were there. And Vegas is filled with people trying to take money from you. Or you got to give people money. I didn't think mm -hmm. about money the entire time I was there, even though we were spending money constantly. But also, we don't gamble. So that may be another thing that people yeah. here in Vegas, they assume gambling. We didn't even step into a, uh, what's it called? A casino. Well, you know, you pass by it, but we didn't 
do anything. Not a machine, not a $20, not a $10, nothing. Nope. So money wasn't being spent there. Mm -hmm. But it was being spent um, with experiences and restaurants and things like that. Completely yeah. different experience from 10 years I wanna ago. I want to move your mic. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> completely different experience from when we went 10 years ago when we were celebrating my 25th. 25 to 35, 10 year difference. <laughs> and we had a little, uh, we, mm -hmm. we, we saw the water fountain 10 years ago. We did the water fountain again. Lazio, yeah. <laughs> and hey, that water fountain is just crazy. But the experience, <laughs> and then also another thing in regards to, to money and expenses, we, uh, we went to Drea's Beach Club, mm -hmm. which is, if you, listen, if Drake says a line about your, your resort or your place in his song and oh, it's on the positive side, he goes to all of Drea's and like, oh. Cause that's the only beach club everybody say that plays our music. Everything else, oh. everything else is like EDM and that type of. <laughs> Got it. We <laughs> that's that type of music, but Drake's doesn't have that at all. So if Drake, if Drake mentions somebody was like the three phases of financial freedom is you know you budgeting, learn how to manage your money, and then the third one is knowing the locations that Drake speaks about in his songs. <laughs> so <laughs> or but, go into it. Or go into it. So <laughs> that was that was an amazing experience. We you know we got to. We got to have a good time. Even our business coach came out. Donnie came out, and we was drinking and, and partying and having a good time. Yeah. So Vegas owes us nothing. Good times. Good vibes. I definitely <laughs> recommend Usher, and uh, he is he is a legend, so we definitely need to be out there supporting him. But that was an amazing experience, and we got, we got back. So a few things have happened over these last couple, I want to say weeks, that we haven't even spoke about. Like? You want to go to the brand deal conversation? Oh, Sure. Brand deal. Actually, you know Maybe. what? Oh, I know. Go ahead. I was going to say, I need a therapy session, so we could use the rest of the episode on that. You're not going to get a therapy session from me. So It's a conflict of interest. Over the <laughs> last, over the last uh, 40, 45 days or so, we finally rolled out our accelerator program. Mm -hmm. and the Which accelerator is more of just a high ticket program from you just taking our course and going and doing it on your own. Now we're offering something that we kind of work with you to help you get it up and running, basically. Yeah, so we rolled out this 90-day program. And it is, so our the goal is to take you from zero to launching your cleaning business within 90 days, getting you to a certain amount of income. And that we give you one-on-one -on -one support. You get one-on-one -on -one calls. It's more, of a, it's more of a, instead of DIY, it's more of a done-with-you type program, right? Yeah. So we finally rolled it out. But we've been dragging our feet on this for... Like we talk about, we talk about per Maybe perfection, <laughs> like holding us back. That was literally perfection holding us back as long as possible. And the only reason we rolled it out was because we were working with another company. And shout outs to them. I'm not gonna put them on blast, but the person who's working with the individual ended up like quitting on us. Mm -hmm. And when they quit on us, they literally dropped their entire calendar on us. Like they had like five to seven calls. Mm -hmm. With students or potential students or potential customers, and they dropped them. And it was like, we dropped all these calls right on your calendar. I'm gone. I'm done. And we said, we sat there and said, oh crap, well, I gotta start taking these calls. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I started taking these calls and I've been doing so since. And it's been a new experience for me. Like? It's been extremely challenging, difficult, <laughs> frustrating, upsetting. And one of the things you keep telling me is that I t I'm, I'm becoming too emotional on these calls. Not becoming, but I think that that's part of your personality in general. So the reason why I say it's similar is because we have these conversations just, um, let's say, social media with people saying things, not necessarily to us, uh, most of our followers positive. Um, but even if somebody says something on our ad or just to us or even to other people that you've seen mm -hmm. and you're like, that doesn't make sense, blah, blah, you know, they can learn more, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, you know, we are, I always say people are going to be people. I don't think we can change everyone. We are not for everyone. So certain things I just decide not to give my energy to. Now, I'm not saying which way is right or wrong, mm -hmm. but I know that those type of things tend to bother you more. And I'm like, I don't care because I don't know them and they don't know me. So they're going to say whatever based off of two seconds of seeing something or just not even learning more. And most of the things they're writing don't even make sense. So I don't even give it that energy. So that's similar to this when you're speaking to people or people don't show up or have the respect, probably some of y'all, to just cancel an appointment or whatever, respond, whatever it may be. And I'm like, that's just how people are. Unfortunately, that's just how people are. That's okay. how I say it. How I see it, sorry. 
and let me explain how how this plays into it. So there's a so you have the ability to talk to you know one of us one on one to see if this is a good fit, right? To join mm-hmm. the program. And this this podcast is not about the program, but it's just literally just about people. people. <laughs> and, it's, and whether you had a nine to five or whether you in entrepreneurship, we were thrown into the way this this has worked out, and it's actually worked out in our favor because it's gotten better over the last forty five days or so. But they literally they um, there is an application, and then there's an ability to book a call. So the first challenge comes in a place where people book calls and they don't show up. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine the frustration mm-hmm. that I feel sitting on the line or sitting yeah, like, during your day? Waiting. During my day, mm-hmm. I set like four or five hours up for, to take calls from people to literally find out if we're a good fit to help them. This is a call to actually find out if they we can help them get to their goals. So that's the way the first thing starts. And I am stop you there for, that's each, for each way. I'm like. They don't care. <laughs> they don't know that you technically can help them. I mean, they may have been interested at the time, but they don't really have an understanding of what it entails, what it looks like. You know, we say, I don't, you know, I don't know what I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. So they, even if they may think maybe you can help me, maybe I can't. That's not how everyone is thinking about it. Go on. <laughs> so they booked the call. So you asked, so you asked, uh, they may be able to. You said they don't. They don't know what they don't know. Mm-hmm. But how do you know? How do you? How do you not know if you don't show? Right, that's a good one. How do you not? How do you not know? How do you not know if you don't show? It sounds backwards, but I understand what you're trying to if say. If you show, you're gonna know. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> how about that? If you show, if you show up on a call, you're gonna know. But I don't know that, right? I'm assuming you know that because you're like, I know what I can provide to them. I'm speaking as so the if other person. so. Think about it like this: if if you're going to sit down and talk to someone about like something that you want to do in life. Like Let's say I'm, a therapist. I'm, I'm stuck. And I know there is something that you have that I want because I reached out to you. I mean, and I applied on the application. You applied, the you applied, you set up this appointment, <laughs> right? Right. And I didn't force you to, I didn't force you to book. Mm-hmm. I didn't force you to, to do the application. I damn sure didn't force you to show up cause you didn't show up. So, that's one of my that's one of my challenges as well. It's like, why would someone yeah. in their right mind say <laughs> I'm looking for help and then not show up to get the help they they say they wanted? Because people be talking. I mean, you know that you have friends that say I want to do this, I want to do that, and you're like, so don't, why don't you just do it? Like, I think that's different though. Why? That's that's different because you are just talking to talk. Just the same thing. They just apply to apply. It's the same type of thing. It's like, okay, I want to learn to play an instrument. I want to work out. I want to, so many things I want to do. You say you want to do it. And I may submit, you know, to see a trainer and then I don't follow up with it. Like, okay, that was just a one-time thing. Or I just don't follow up with it. Or I just talk and don't implement. That's practically what most people do. They're just talking without the actual. (laughs) So they're supplying and they're not really implementing. That's how I see it. So how do you think you're going to get ahead in life? (laughs) If you are just going around saying, I'm going to, I'm not going to implement anything. I'm not even going to show up to the call. Because my thing is like, if you don't show up to the call, I'm not going to, obviously that's like a no call, no show is like a, I'm not going to work with you. Right. You're probably not going to succeed in life. You probably should just stop and, and just quit whatever you're doing. Because you're probably not going to do well. So there's multiple things as to it. Now, obviously some things happen with people. Life happens, but we're not talking about that. Majority of the people, life ain't happening every single time. So there's multiple things. Either you don't care anymore. Like, oh, well, I booked it and I no longer am interested. Right? And that's less and that than happens. You, people book it same day and then don't show same day. So right? I guess they change their mind within. They change their mind. People are allowed to change their mind. And that happens. I think the part that you're kind of thinking is, just have the decency to say something, right? Because you're you're wasting someone's time. But back to that, people just simply don't care, right? They don't. They have no connection to you or us or whoever's going to be on the other line. So they just proceed how they're going to proceed. The lack of respect for people's time is how I say that is a bigger issue than you just booking something. Because people talk all the time, and I don't. You know, you're going to implement or you're not. That's how. So I think about it like there's a ma- like we when I used to do job interviews and the no call no shows were just like the even when you think about your nine to five your job the no call no show is literally the the top line item that is like the most disrespectful mm-hmm. thing you could do at a job mm-hmm. yeah and you know the job and we've had people no call no show mm-hmm. they not dead they just <laughs> like yo I'm out 
And listen, you do what you want to do. But I think if I think, I think it says more about you. It does say more. To, what, did, what did Jay-Z, Jay-Z said? Says more about you if you're not feeling us type of thing. I think yeah. Jay-Z or Kanye. Jay-Z or Kanye. It well, says I, more I, about you if you're not feeling us. And I'm not saying it says more about you if you don't want to work with us. I mean, just says more about you if you don't have the decency to just at least cancel it or say like, oh, I can't make it or whatever the case may be. It's something that takes five seconds of your time. So, yeah. <laughs> so the, the no call, no shows is like the number, like the biggest frustration that happens. And it's like, I want... It's like, I want to give you as much information as possible, but I can't do that if you don't show up. And then I think about the person on the other end. I don't know who they are, but I know mm-hmm. for a fact that life didn't happen that bad where they couldn't send an email, a text, or a phone. Or just cancel the meeting. Just you don't even have to talk. You, you don't got to talk. Cancel it or reschedule it yourself in, in your email or text. So you Listen, don't even have to speak. <laughs> that is the biggest frustration. So the next biggest frustration is, and I'm never, I'm never going to get over the no call, no show thing. The next biggest frustration <laughs> is... Like so, I'm doing these calls now, and and it's not like it's not like I'm a I'm a sales a salesperson. I'm a person, and I'm not good at I'm what am I trying to say? I'm not good at holding back my emotions on some of these calls, mm-hmm. right? And you keep saying I get too emotional. So I'm not a salesperson. It's not like I've been doing sales for 25 years. The purpose of the <laughs> call is literally to learn more about you and. If you're a good fit, I'm going to tell you something that we may be able to help you with. And if not, you keep it moving and that's fine. Mm-hmm. So you get on the call and then it's like, then I'm talking to people. It's, it's like most of those people. And I'm hope I'm hoping some of y'all listen to this um, <laughs> because I'm not going to use any names. I'm going to use examples of, of calls I've done because mm-hmm. I'm trying to understand how to think outside of my body because you know it's like everyone's outside not outside of you. my body outside of myself because you're always like everyone's not us yeah that's that's a big thing though you keep saying everybody's not us so we get on we get on some of these calls and then it's like yo <clears throat> i was speaking to someone and they said that so they were i'm not gonna go into their personal life too much but literally at the end of this the end of the day they said i am not i am not there i'm not sick and tired of where i am today enough to get to my goals. Okay. That, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And I was like, wait, you just told me you had a kid and you don't got time to see your kid and you're working multiple jobs. And I literally said, you're telling me that you're not tired of where you are today enough to change your kid's life. And they sat back and said, wow, when you put it like that, I, <laughs> I, just, I literally just said that. And I said, if you, if I said, I can't change it. I cannot help you if you're not, if you're not, if you're not even comprehending what you just said. Well, they did. They, uh, they acknowledged it. So they acknowledged they were able to be honest with themselves. And I said, until you get to a place where you want to change either your life or your, if you, even, even if you're selfish enough for yourself, right? You're like, I'm not selfish. I'm selfish enough where I don't got to change my life Mm -hmm. until you become unselfish enough to want to change your kid's life. I would, there'll be nothing I'd be able to help you with. Right. I mean, right. I don't disagree because you at the end of the day, you have to want it bad enough for whatever you decide to do. Right. I want to I, I need to have it wanted bad enough to change my eating habits, to change the way I work out, to change the way um, I'm showing up at work. Like whatever it is, I have to want it bad enough. No one outside of me can change that. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you speak about that with family and friends like this person needs to do this. I mean, like they unless they get there, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. Similar to when people say, oh. This person should be in therapy. I'm like, unless they want to be in therapy, don't put them in. Because they ain't going to work. They're just going to be like, well, I'm here. I'm just here because I should be or because this person said. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Or this person said I should be here. So it really is a personal thing. And that's what I try to explain to you. I'm like, yes, at some point. In some extent, I'm trying to show you something different. However, if you're not willing or you're not there or open to seeing something different, no matter what I say, it's not going to matter. It's really not going to matter. So that's why I'm like, you know, yes, you should try to assist someone. But I can't change and help everyone. And that is okay. And especially can't change and help those that don't want to be helped. Mm. That's really it. Yeah, that one, those are the worst. So let me, let me, you, I'm just taking a note right quick. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that that's why I always say, or I be like, or I say to you that too much emotion, but for you, you get very passionate about this because you know that it can help people. That's your thing. You're, you're a very passionate person and that's not a bad thing. Um, but I think that when it 
come today and you're like, this person, I know that we can help that. I know that we can change it. And I'm just like, but they don't know it. And they're not, they're not seeing that. Then that's on them. So part of the, part of the thing about sales is that you have to be able to, you have to be able to build, I'm talking about my bridge again. You have to be able to build the bridge of, uh, self doubt. Oh. <laughs> you have to build a bridge of self doubt and self belief, self limiting beliefs and the land of opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to sell anyone a dream. But right. I know if it's realistic, you, I'm realistic. I'm I'm just literally realistic. But that's the thing; they don't know that. That's the big thing. We know that because we're like we've seen it, we've done it. Mm -hmm. We have our students doing it. We have you know our students in 42 states. We have our students doing 10 million in revenue in just two or three years. So we know it, but they don't know it. That is the biggest thing. And even if you say it, they're like, mm, okay, but they have to buy in. But can it. you imagine? I guess there's. I guess when you think about it like this, if a person is, I'm going back to the parent thing because I want to stay with that. I want to stay with that for a second because if you're a parent, and my I, and I know growing up in the hood, right? We we had we had parents. There were parents on the street that did drugs, and they know the drugs are harmful to the kids, but they were too. They didn't care. They might have they might have understood it, but they really didn't care enough. But also, it's a different ball game because it it's a medical thing, right? It's a sickness, so it's not as easy to separate. Like your body actually wants it, even if you don't want it. So it's a I, little. It's a little. I think it's the it's same category. Little, um, I think mm. I think it's the same category of. I think of, it could be similar of, of mental illness, where if you have if you know that you are struggling and you have a kid that's struggling, and you're like, and you literally say to yourself. I don't care enough about where we are today. They must not be struggling that bad, number one. But number two is like, I don't care enough about where we are today in order to change my kid's life. It's okay with, It's okay to be selfish. It's right. okay to be selfish for yourself. But I cannot, and that was the rest of the emotion came into play. I'm like, I cannot yeah. understand how you're sitting here, you have a kid, and you're saying that you don't care enough to change your life for your kid. Because then you're getting into like the moral category. And like, well, do you even want to work with somebody like that? Oh no, 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 no! And that wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't even about. It wasn't even about getting them to work with them. At, at that, at some point, I I turn off about about what we're gonna work with. But then it's like, how? Then the other part of it, like, how can I help you get to wherever your goal is? Because I can't help you get over your mindset goal. Well, you ain't gonna do that in forty five minutes. That's the Abs other part. Absolutely as well. not. <laughs> but if there is something that I could point you to or a resource to give you, I'm going to give you something. But I can't give you anything to go towards if you don't have any goals for yourself and your family. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with that. But that's that's the part where we kind of differ. And it's like, I'm going to give you what I can. You either go receive it or you're not. That's me. Like, I'm ending. We're ending here. You're like, you're going to receive it. You're going to receive it. You're going to receive it. Like, you really want them to receive it. And they not. They just not getting it or they don't want to or whatever it may be. And I'm like, okay. I'm like fine. That's fine for me. Sometimes talking, <laughs> some, literally, sometimes talking to these people is like when you see the meme with the parents and or the father is like one, one plus, plus one, four. one plus one, and you keep saying four, one plus one. And you said four, one plus one is uh, yeah. four, one plus one, four. That's how it's like. Some yeah. sometimes talking to some of these people, and I'm realizing even when we had even in the cleaning business side, and you realize how to talk to people, and you understand where their mindset is. But this is a whole different type of mindset conversation mm -hmm. where I'm literally trying to get you to unbelieve what you believe to be true mm -hmm. and trying to help you see that what well, other things are possible. Right. So I did another one. And this is another category to call. So you got the no show mm -hmm. and then you got the person who isn't sick and tired enough. And then you got those who feel like they could do it on their own. Mm -hmm. That's another category of person. Yeah. Those are the, those are those and are. And it's kind of like everyone. And it's also challenges in each one. Yeah, challenges. So that's the thing. So something like they could do it on their own. I'm like, my question would be so. What, what are you what, doing on the call? Yeah. Why are we here? Why would you book a? Why did you book a call if you could do it on your own? Why am I going to try out this trainer if I could do it on my own? If I know I'm not going to go with it, it's kind of a waste of my time and their time. Even if you're like, oh, I wanted a free training session. Okay, fine. But if you could do it on your own, why you're on the call? And then if you can, then go ahead and do it. Right. So I think 97 percent of the people that tell you they can do it on their own or if they're at a certain point when you really dig into it. It's kind of like you, you actually are not where you should, like you can be further if you had help. Right. And I think that for anybody anywhere, we all can benefit from helping anything. We're not experts at everything like if we are all if we all didn't need somebody, then none of these sports players, none of these LeBrons or anybody will have coaches and trainers and all that type of thing. Right. They all have someone to excel 
further. So if you could do it on your own, go ahead. And that's where, once again, that's where it stops for me. Go ahead. <laughs> we don't need to be on the call. Okay, well, it was a pleasure having you on the call. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do your thing. But you're like, you want to show them, well, actually, this is the other options and stuff like which I'm not saying that that's wrong, but some people just continue to like be re have rebuttal after rebuttal after rebuttal. And it's like, okay, well, let's just move forward. Let's just go different ways because we have different plans of what moving forward and growing looks like. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, that's 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 one that's that's another big challenge too, where they do feel like they could do it on their own. You're like, there's so many rebuttals, and mm -hmm. I was talking to this this one person, and they were like, "Yeah, you know, I, I started my business." I was like, "Okay, what you did so far?" And they said, "Oh, I got my website." I was like, "What else?" They're like, "Yeah, yeah, I got the LLC mm -hmm. and the website." I was like, "That's not a business." Mm -hmm. I was like, "You just got an LLC and the website, and you th you, you making money?" Yeah. Do you have any clients? That's not a business. And said, like, "Oh, well, you know, I'm up to that part." You just, I was like, "Well, you just told me you had everything." Yeah. And then when I sort of ask you what everything is, you absolutely have nothing. Yeah. So I was like, "All right, well, let's just start with the website." Nobody don't like to. Nobody don't like to. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Say that they need help. Not no, not not that, but discredit the work that they haven't done. <laughs> okay, shady boots. Um, I'm just. I was trying to say like nobody. Those type of people, I should say, that says like I have it. They don't like to admit that they don't have they it. Admit, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. They don't like to be honest with themselves. Sometimes they feel like they have more than it is, or they may feel like, well, I got this far further than other people. Then how know? can you get far in life if you don't want to admit where your shortcomings are? Well, ask everybody out there. Hey, everybody's not honest with themselves. You know people in your life that's not honest with themselves. So it's like, and once again, that's how it goes back to me. I'm like, people are people. There's Everybody has a different personality. Everybody has a different feeling. Everybody has this and the other. And most people can't admit things. <laughs> I mean, let's be realistic. Most people can't admit things. Um, not everyone asks for help when they need it, even though they may know they need it. So... It's just the the different people that we're always going to meet in life. So we went through the website, and I, I said, <laughs> I said, can I be honest with you for a second? And I said, your website is absolutely crap. <laughs> and I said, it looked like you paid somebody about a hundred dollars to get this website. And I said, oh, actually, I got it for free. I said, it looks like you got it for free. And and I went through not only in a, and I want you guys to listen to this too because it wasn't like a, a, I'm I'm essing on you session. It was like. Here is why your website is, is trash, and I'm giving you the reasons why. And here's how you can improve it. Mm -hmm. I was like, you tried to be cheap. You went to the free route, and the free route is not going to make you money because mm -hmm. you don't have this, 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 and this. And then once I said that, they said, oh, wow, this session has been totally worth it. And I was like, so it took me telling you that your website was trash. It took me telling you that mm -hmm. you didn't have a business. It took me telling you that you have absolutely haven't done anything for you to feel like this session was worth it. But you started the session by saying you had everything. Yeah. And it took me, it took me literally crapping on your business to tell you what you don't have in order for you to recognize that, which is fine. Sometimes you need somebody externally to come in and look at things to have mm -hmm. a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. But by the end of that call, it was like, all right, well, you gave me plenty of information. Thank you. I was like, well, you don't, you, you're not going to do anything with this information. <laughs> you just, you just literally think it's a, it's a free session. We're going to hop on. I'm going to crap on your website and you think you're going to go implement anything we just said. Probably not. Probably not. And I'm okay with that. So things like that, I'm going to just move on. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's that that person. That's on them. And you would be like, maybe a day later, like, can you believe that person yeah. said? <laughs> and I'm like, boy, that was yesterday. I done moved on. But yeah. That reminded me of what you had said. Something similar when you were watching. Oh, what's his name? The Where? comedians that they said they moved their stuff from YouTube to Netflix. And people were saying, well, I didn't want to pay for it. Oh, anyway, yeah. Or, that was uh, so. So, um. 85 South, which are three comedians, they were on Earn Your Leisure, uh -huh. and they were having a, it was a, it was a great conversation, Earn Your Leisure is a podcast, 85 South is a group of three comedians, and mm -hmm. three three business owners, I don't want to just label them as comedians, three business owners, three comedians who happen to own businesses, or whatever they want to be called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to diminish their value to the, to the, to the mean, culture. They probably want to be comedians that have businesses. Yeah. Okay, continue. <laughs> oh, so they were they were they were on um they were getting millions of streams on YouTube mm -hmm. as most people do. And there were things that YouTube did to kind of remove them from the algorithm and and stuff like that. So they their views were dropping, they weren't getting money from advertisements, sponsorships, and they said we're going to make our own platform, meaning we're going to take our videos down from that platform, build our own, 
and it's going to be a subscription model like Netflix. If you want to watch, we get millions of views, millions of people watching this mm-hmm. on YouTube. So we should have at least millions of views on our own platform. Yeah, right. So they took it down <laughs> from YouTube, um, from that platform and put it on their own and put a, a paywall up saying you got to pay like, I don't know what it was, seven, eight dollars, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. Finish your story. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to. No, I was just, well, what I was saying is when you said that the person is not going to do anything with that information, they're like, oh, okay, well, thank you. This was helpful when it's free. Mm-hmm. And then, so it reminded me of what them having on YouTube, everybody's loving it in millions and, it, and when it's free, but when you have to pay for it, that's when everybody's like, oh, hold on, wait a minute. Cause he was saying that they st- started having comments of people saying, well, oh, you guys aren't that funny anyway. He's like, we was funny yesterday when we were on this other platform, but now that you have to pay, we're no longer funny. Oh, we're not that funny. Or not that funny, sorry. Which kind of reminded me of people like, you know, they may get on the call. They're like, this is great information. But then when we tell them, well, to get more information and to work further with us and to grow more than you have to pay a fee. It's like, ah, eh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> like, I, I don't need I don't need to do that. I don't, I don't really need to. I'm, I'm good where we're at. So it just remind me of that kind of correlation with people when it comes to even in the conversations of you just want everything free. You just want you want me to give, 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 and what are you going to do with it? Most of the times we ain't doing nothing with it, especially when it's free. We're not going to really implement it regardless. We're just going to be like, oh, okay, thanks. And, you know, because we ain't paying, we ain't, we ain't going to pay attention, essentially. Listen, yeah, I remember when we used to get free lunch back in the day. You didn't eat free lunch, did you? What? You didn't eat free lunch, did you? No, I used to bring lunch. Free lunch <laughs> did his job. I don't job. even know if I got free lunch. Free lunch did his job, but it wasn't the most nutritional food. They used to give us the little the little circle pizzas. Oh, that milk. The little uh, the square milks <laughs> and, and the, the little loaf of breads and maybe some ham and cheese. And it was free. Mm. And we did it, it did what it had to do, right? Parents couldn't mm-hmm. give us the lunches and the Lunchables or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It did its job for the time. But at some point, you got to remove from that free lunch. <laughs> at some point, when I went through middle school, my mom was like, we're going to start making lunch at home. We're going to start taking leftovers. Like, we had to move from that free lunch. I was like, okay, well, we're going to start giving you money to buy your own lunch. Now, mm-hmm. that's that's the end of middle school. That's going into high school. You're not eating a free lunch no more. Our at high school, you can still get you still get lunch. You get free lunch. Yeah. High school, you still get free lunch, but at some point, you're like, you know what? I gotta move from that free lunch to something that's actually nutritious for my body for me to wake up. Yeah, like this alert. stuff. This stuff is not <laughs> healthy. It's gonna get the job done, but it's not healthy. At some point, mm-hmm. you gotta remove from that free lunch. So when they say, "Hey, we moved our stuff from YouTube from that platform to our, our own platform," it's like if you feel like this is the information that you need. Or that you feel like we're funny, or whatever. that you enjoy it and get mm-hmm. you through your day, then you should be okay paying whatever that paywall is to get you to that, so that they could continue to show up as as their best selves. Yeah. And going back to that free information, I was literally on a call with someone literally this week, and they had information that we had back in 2020, right? Mm-hmm. And they hopped on a call. We spoke in 2023, and they said, "Before we start, do not get upset." I've known this information since 2020. It's 2023. I've done nothing with it. And I said, why would I be upset? I was like... It's on you. It's on you. <laughs> you don't want losing out. You didn't implement. I was like, <laughs> that same time you had the information, our students have done $10 million since then. Mm-hmm. We've had our first million dollar student since then. Our students have opened up businesses in 40 plus states since then. I was like, they're they're doing well. I was like, we're doing <laughs> Where well. Are you? I was like, that's on you. But then I said, most of the people who get that information at that level have done nothing with it because they didn't value it because of the price. Mm -hmm. And people who are getting information today at this price are doing much better, much faster because they value that information more. They've seen the testimonials. They've seen the student success. They've seen our success. And they value that information more. So now they're taking action a lot faster. We're about to have, we had our first million dollar student from 2021 to 2023. Mm-hmm. So a two and a half year gap between that. We're going to have our second million dollar student probably by the end of this year or maybe early next year. Right. So that two and a half years has now broken down to maybe two years at this point. Mm-hmm. So people are taking action because now I, um, this guy Neo says this, when you pay, you pay attention. And mm-hmm. I truly believe that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's no one here that will say that that's wrong. If I'm getting something free, you're like, okay, probably not checking it. If I'm paying something that I feel is a value or a certain amount, like, uh uh-uh, I pay my money for this, I'm going to make sure I, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you're going to go, you're going to show up, you're going to 
Anything, anything I could think of. Parties, flights, traveling, uh, anything. You know what I thought about when we started, when you started working out, what was the first thing you did, we did? 10 years ago? 10 years ago. What was oh, the first ten, thing we did? Uh, I got a trainer. Exactly. So imagine if you started working out and I, I just gave I you YouTube doing. videos. <laughs> and I was like, yo, just go do these YouTube workouts. I thought I would have shut it off. What about if I made, what about if, okay, what about if I gave you YouTube videos? All right, what I about did I do some P90X. You did P90X. <laughs> so- YouTube videos, you said you would have you shut up. What if I gave you YouTube videos and workout machines you should have did in the gym? Well, I wouldn't have known what to do. And then, like, I think it kind of goes back to what you said when I said I did some P90X. So I did do some free stuff because somebody had, I think my mother had, actually, some P90X. P90X is fire. Did that. But then eventually, I had to move on. I had to go and find out what's in the gym. Or I wanted to because that's what I wanted specific to my body, my gym. Yeah, like what? I my see goals. these machines. I don't know how to use it, though. Mm -hmm. How many reps? What are reps? What are sets? What are super sets? What are all these things? Like, So for me to get that, I paid for a trainer to educate me on being in the gym and what that looks like. So when you think about it like this, you got, you got the free route. You got the... Um, you got the free route. You got the, I'm going to try this thing on my own. And then you got a, a personal trainer who is walking you through the process that knows your body, that knows mm -hmm. the gym, that knows the equipment, and he knows your goals. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you're going to get the best results from? Well, uh, I think the trainer. And I also think when we talk about, because we speak about free route, route, routes, even in our course, that doing the freeway for something just means there's more time as well, yeah. which most people are not willing to do because everybody wants to shortcut and everybody wants to get there fast. So most people are like, oh, yeah, well, I don't want to spend on that or I don't want to do that, whatever it may be. Um, you want to go the free route, but you're not willing to put in the time to do the free route. So that's another thing, you know, that I kind of see with people. So I think that the trainer, you will go further faster. And more efficiently. You're gonna you're gonna pay in time or you're gonna pay in money. You gotta yeah. figure out what's what's more important to you. What do you have more of during this time? Mm -hmm. Now speaking to another lady, um, another person I wanna say. You be speaking to people, but yeah, you do. I definitely you do. I people. got so many stories, but you this one a lot of people. <laughs> this one when I say you're gonna pay you're gonna pay in time, you're gonna pay in money, and I say this all the time, you gotta figure out what you have more of right now mm -hmm. and use that to your advantage. So we're on the phone and we're like, all right, you know, I don't want to do this on my own. I want you guys to do it for me. I don't have the time to do it. So I'm like, in my mind, oh, shoot, you got the money then. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if you have the money and you don't have the time, that means you want to pay somebody to do everything for you. I was like, here's that price to do everything for you. Do nothing. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't think it's going to be that much. I was like, well, you want to sit down on your ass and not do anything? <laughs> like, what do you what do you think it's going to cost? I was like, oh, wow, I, th I thought it would have cost this. I was like, so this is you doing it for free. This is someone doing it with you. Why do you think someone doing it with you is going to be this close to someone <laughs> doing everything for you? Where you just show up. That's like, that's like trying to build a butt doing squats. And then that's like trying to <laughs> have a trainer help you build the butt. And then that's like Surgery. going to Dr. Miami. <laughs> what do you think? You think Dr. Miami is going to cost anywhere near a trainer? If I go to Dr. Miami today, I was like, yo, not me, but yeah. I go to Dr. Miami <laughs> as I like, give my wife a butt. <laughs> Or have a workout of trainers. Like, yo, here's, here's my or wife. Or you do your squats in your or, house. Or you, go do, you do a bunch of air squats in your house. Two different. How do you think you hit the butt the fastest? Ranges. Exactly. <laughs> it's three different price ranges. I just show up. Exactly. <laughs> you show up and you get your, <laughs> you get your butt. And then you, is, do, you, know, you do a little recovery. You keep it moving. You go to Dr. Miami. It's a you, great analogy, actually. It's a really good analogy, especially in this day and age. You are spending the least amount of time to get the maximum result that you want. Mm -hmm. That's the least quickly, amount. Quickly, too. Quickly. That's the least amount of time. I'm ear squatting for at least four months. <laughs> More than, <laughs> if you're not More using weights, you're not, your butt's not going to grow. You know, well, that. even worse. <laughs> I'm gonna be here for a while, <laughs> but more than that. Yeah, that was that was a good analogy right there. So think about it like this: you want to you you want to do air squats in your house, you want to work out with a trainer, or you want to go to Doctor Miami. It's just the different price ranges, <laughs> completely different price ranges, and it's the same type of thing. You're gonna pay in time. You're gonna pay in you're money. You're gonna do YouTube University where you're just googling, you know, searching things. You're gonna do, you know, maybe you work with us, and then you're gonna do. Well, I'll just sit back. So. I think that with you, if you guys don't know, I'm a therapist and I'm um, licensed in New York and in Texas. Look at you with putting so, your credentials out there. I ain't saying nothing. That's just as I'm licensed to let Ooh. you know that it's legit. But What's legit? Me being a therapist and I'm not just saying that like I'm a life coach. Mm. Difference. Um, but when you, when you speak with these Are people. Are you shading life coaches? Me, huh? Are you shading life coaches? 
No, but they're not licensed. Okay. It's not a shade. Um, <laughs> with you speaking with these people reminds me of therapy sessions. And it reminds me of, I think with us running the cleaning business, when we started speaking to people, we're like, what is, what is wrong with people? That social media and me being a therapist just helps me to know, like, everyone is different and people are people. And that's why I try to, like, tell you, that's just going to be that person. Like, you know, you can't. And it's hard. I know it's hard because it's hard to shut down your emotions. You're a human being, right? Yeah. So it's like, how are you telling me to shut it down? But at the same time, it's like, it is a business as well. And so I think with me being a therapist, I can't be so emotionally invested into a client. Yes, I want to give them feedback. Yes, I want to help them. Mm -hmm. But I cannot. There's no way I could survive as a therapist or a person and be a wife, a mother, everything else. And I give my energy to every single client that I see. And so that's what I try to tell you when it comes to you speaking to these people because I'm just like, they're going to drain you and they're going to move on. Yeah. <laughs> and you here telling me and Alani and we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about them. We don't care about that conversation. It's done. You, you know what I mean? So You can't help everybody. Exactly. That's simply it. You can't, you can't help everybody, but there are people out there. That we got some amazing clients. We got some amazing students. We got some amazing people in our lives, too. So we know that the impact is being felt, and we know the impact is being seen. Mm -hmm. But the problem, I, like you said, my problem is I feel like there are people that we could help and – I got another one for you. There's this person losing money in their business every single month. And mm -hmm. I was like, you're lo you've been losing money for a year, mm -hmm. and you're going to keep going? It's like, yeah. I was like, I commend you for keep going, but I also <laughs> condemn you for not getting help. I was like, you yeah. think you're, you're, it's like you're too smart for your own good. And I was like, that's one of the challenges where you feel like if you keep going, it's going to get better. But sometimes you got to be like, yo, I need help. Sometimes you got to cut it off, too. Cut we it have off. We an episode about that. When, it, when should you cut it off? We do have an episode now. Yeah. <laughs> but instead of you saying, instead, even if you, before you cut it off, like, like, let me reach out to somebody for help. Let me try to help. do something different. Yeah, let me try to do something different. So that's one of the challenges as well. But I'm working through it. This is a good, this is a good therapy session for me. Oh, a venting session? Yeah, venting, <laughs> therapy. <laughs> what else we got going on? That was the biggest thing. Um... What else do we have going on? Um, oh, like the way, this is a totally different topic though. I may save it for something else. Maybe like a shorter episode. It's a totally different topic. I just, this was a good one. So I would want to keep it there. All right, y'all. So <laughs> listen, if y'all, if you, if you guys are interested, like I said, we've launched a 90 day accelerator. If you are any one of those people that we named on this call, I mean, this, this, this podcast episode, <laughs> listen, I was, I was able to vent publicly. <laughs> I ain't put no names out there. But also, I think there was a lot of information that was given throughout this conversation. It gives you the type of people to think about. Um, if you are one of those people, think about it. Start start trying to make some changes in your life, man. Start trying to make some adjustments so that you could get to that next level, no matter what that next level may be. So, um, Once again, thank you guys for yeah. tuning in week after week after week. Be sure to go ahead and write us that review. Go ahead and do it right now. Don't be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. Do it right now. <laughs> Don't be one of those people. I'm waiting for you. Do it right now. And thank you for watching us on YouTube as well. We are growing our subscriber list. Continue to try to do that day after day after day. We have a goal for this year, so hopefully we hit it. Um, but thank you for tuning in and come back again next week. Yes, yes, yes. Bye-bye. Talk to you guys next week. Peace.